my friends, I'm Miss Connie from the Hobo Branch and welcome to another episode of Biography Shorts for Kids. This is being filmed in April and April is National Poetry Month. And this month we're going to feature some great children's poets. Today, I'm going to tell you about two very funny poets, Raoul Dahl and Jack Perlutsky. Now, if you're a fan of funny poetry, you might say, what about Shel Silverstein? Well, a couple of weeks ago, Miss Christine from Hollowbrook did a special program on Shel Silverstein, and you can still see that if you go to mcl.org and you're going to select the playlist for middle grade book club, and then you'll see in there, there's an episode by Miss Christine about Shel Silverstein and I would recommend that you go take a look at that. It's very well done. Um, but for today, we're gonna talk about Raul Dahl and Jack Perlutsky, and um, this is how the program's gonna go. Uh, I'm first gonna talk about Raul Dahl. We'll look up, talk a little bit about his life and read a little bit of his poetry, and then I'm gonna show you some materials available to you at the library. And then we'll do the same for Jack Perlutsky. So let's get started. Okay, so first we're going to learn a little bit about Raoul Dahl. I first became acquainted with Raoul Dahl when my third grade teacher would read to us at the end of the day from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I loved it and I've been a fan ever since. Uh, Raoul Dahl was born September 13th, 1916 in Landaff, Wales. And when he was four years old, his father and his sister passed away and his mother was left to raise six children. When he was nine years old, he went to boarding school in England and he wrote letters to his mother every week. And this began his love of writing. At 13, he went to a new boarding school in Repton. And the best thing about this school is that it was um, in the town where the Cadbury Chocolate Company was. And the chocolate company would sometimes ask the boys to rate the chocolate bars, and he loved chocolate. And this experience provided an, some ideas for chocolate, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, when Raoul Dahl was a little older, he was a fighter pilot in World War II and then he became a writer and he wrote short stories and a novel for adults. He wrote and hosted a TV mystery program and wrote two movies, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and James Bond's You Only Live Twice. In 1961, he published James and the Giant Peach and it got good reviews, but it didn't sell very well. But then in 1964, he published Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and of course that had great success. Uh, so I got most of that information from this biography on Raul Dahl, and I will show you that closer up later, and then also some of the information from the Who Was Raul Dahl book. Um, and I will also show you that information later. Now, if you're a Raul Dahl fan, you may probably know some of these books. This is James and the Giant Peach that they were, I mentioned, that was the first one of these that he published and then Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and there was, of course, um, The Great Glass Elevator, but the other ones, I just brought a few of them in because he has so many books. Matilda is very famous, and the BFG, which is really one of my very favorites. Um, if you are a fan of Raul Dahl, you know that he has very imaginative stories and that sometimes they're a little scary but the happy endings balance out the scary parts and there are consequences for mean and greedy people. And um, he is really one of my favorites. Now he's not particularly known for being a poet, but he has this great book called Revolting Rhymes. Um, it is illustrated by Quentin Blake, who also illustrates many of his um, chapter books. And this book is a rhyming book about fairy tales. So he takes uh, several different fairy tales and he writes a rhyme about them. They're quite long. I'm only going to read a little bit of one of them. 
gonna read a little from the Three Little Pigs. But there's Cinderella in here, and there is Little Red Riding Hood, and many different fairy tales, and it's quite clever. So this is the Three Little Pigs. The animal I really dig above all others is the pig. Pigs are noble, pigs are clever, pigs are courteous. However, now and then to break this rule, one meets a pig who is a fool. What, for example, would you say of strolling through the woods one day right there in front of you, you saw a pig who built his house of straw? The wolf who saw it licked his lips and said, that pig has had his chips. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hairs on my chin and chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The little pig began to pray. The wolfie blew his house away. He shouted, bacon, pork, and ham. Oh, what a lucky wolf I am. And though he ate the quick pig quite fast, Carefully, he carefully kept the tail to last. Wolf wandered on, a trifle bloated. Surprise, surprise, for soon he noted another little house for pigs, and this one had been made of twigs. So it goes through the whole story, and it's very clever, and if you are a fan of funny poetry, this is a great one. And I will show you that up close up as we're going to move on to um, look at some of the materials available about and by Raul Dahl that you can find in our library catalog. Raul Dahl from the Blast Off Reader series. This was written by Christina Leaf. Simple text and full color photographs introduce readers to Raul Dahl, developed by literacy experts for students in kindergarten through third grade. Who Was Raul Dahl, written by True Kelly and illustrated by Stephen Marchese from the popular Who Was series. This is a chapter book biography of Raul Dahl. Fantastic Mr. Dahl, written by Michael Rosen and illustrated by Quentin Blake. How did a young boy from a small town in Wales grow up to become one of the world's greatest storytellers, the creator of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, and Matilda? From his days at boarding school to his love of chocolate and endless storytelling, Raoul Dahl's life, just like his books, was nothing short of extraordinary. Now the award-winning writer Michael Rosen explores Raoul Dahl's own story to discover what made his writing so fantastic. The Raul Dahl Treasury by Raul Dahl, and there are a variety of illustrators in this book. This book contains short stories, extracts from longer fiction, rhymes, and memoirs, as well as unpublished unpub poetry and letters. Raul Dahl's Revolting Rhymes by Raul Dahl and illustrated by Quentin Blake. This book contains humorous retellings in verse of six well-known fairy tales featuring surprise endings in place of the traditional happily ever after. Next, we're going to learn about Jack Prolutsky. And I first learned about Jack Prolutsky from watching a television show with my children. My children used to watch Arthur on PBS, a cartoon show, and it is based on the Arthur books by Mark Brown. And the episode was called Arthur and the Poetry Contest. And in it, Jack Prolutsky was a guest speaker at the local library. So that's the first time I became acquainted with his poetry and his name. Um, but he has written many, many books that we have available for you through our library catalog and um, I'll tell you about those at the end. But I was able to get some information about his life by going into our databases. So that would be from mcl.org. Um, right on that main page right now, you can see a search field um, and there's a tab for databases. And I clicked on the tab and in the search field, I put Jack Prolutsky and I was able to come up with some interesting information about him. Um, the source I picked was a guide to literary masters and their works, and the article author was Craig Payne. 
So that's where I got a lot of this information. Jack Kolecki was born on September 18th, 1940 in Brooklyn, New York, and he went to New York City Public Schools. He actually graduated from the High School of Music and Art, and he was a very talented young singer. He attended Hunter College, but left school to um, work, and he had a lot of different jobs, he, including he was a truck driver and a cab driver and a furniture mover. When he was a little older, he lived in Greenwich Village in the 1950s and early 1960s. And grown-ups will be interested to know that some of his friends were Phil Silverstein and Bob Dylan. Uh, during, this decide, during this time, he decided to um, try to be an artist. So over a six-month period, he was drawing these imaginary animals. And at the very end of that time, he decided he would write a poet, a poem for each animal. And then he went to a publisher to show her his work. Her name was Susan Hirschman. And she um, said that she didn't like the pictures, but she did like the poetry. So he commented on this. I watched a, an interview, a video interview on the internet from Reading Rockets. And I'll provide you with that site later because I thought it was really interesting to see him tell some of his own stories. But he said he spent six months on these drawings and two hours on the poems and she didn't like the drawings and she liked the poems. So she had a special drawer for him and he would put, she would put his poems in there and it took some time for him to accumulate enough poems for a book. But in 1967, she published his first book and this was the beginning of a long relationship that she had as his editor and publisher. Now he's written many, many, many poetry books since then. Um, and he's won many awards, including he was the Poetry Foundation's first children's poet laureate. And um, according to their press release, this award aims to raise awareness that children have a natural receptivity to poetry and are its most appreciative audience, especially when poems are written specifically for them. And of course, Jack Kolecki writes great poems for children. Um, and this was a two year term, it was 2006 to 2008. Now, Jack Kolecki met his wife, Carolyn, in New Mexico, where she was a librarian. And in 1990, they moved to Washington State. And as best as I can tell, he still lives there today. Um, and I wanted to read to you, I was gonna to read to you two, a po two poems from The New Kid on the Block, poems by Jack Kolecki. This illustrator is James Stevenson. Um, over the years, he's used some different illustrators. And here are two of his very funny poems. This first one is Louder Than a Clap of Thunder. Louder than a clap of thunder, louder than an eagle screams, louder than a dragon blunders, or a dozen football teams, louder than a four alarmer or a rushing waterfall, louder than a knight in armor jumping from a 10 foot wall, louder than an earthquake, an earthquake rumbles, louder than a tidal wave, louder than an ogre grumbles as he stumbles through his cave, louder than stampeding cattle, louder than a cannon roars, louder than a giant's rattle. That's how loud my father snores. That was funny. And then this one is called, Be Glad Your Nose Is On Your Face. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted on some other place. For if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine if your precious nose were sandwiched in between your toes. That clearly would not be a treat, for you'd be forced to smell your feet. Your nose would be a source of dread were it attached atop your head. It soon would drive you to despair, forever tickled by your hair, 
within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe for when you were obliged to sneeze, your brain would rattle from the breeze. Your nose instead through thick and thin remains between your eyes and chin, not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. And next we're going to go um, look at some of the materials available to you by Jack Pilevsky in our catalog. Arthur and the Poetry Contest, a Mark Brown Arthur chapter book. This series was created by Mark Brown, but this particular book was written by Stephen Krensky, and the teleplay was by Joe Fallon. Fern dares Arthur and his friends to enter the poetry writing contest at the local library, but writing poems turns out to be harder than they thought. For laughing out louder, more poems to tickle your funny bone, selected by Jack Prelutsky and illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. This is a collection of humorous poems by a variety of authors. It's Thanksgiving by Jack Perletsky, illustrated by Mary Lynn Hafner. This book presents 12 poems about Thanksgiving, including When Daddy Carves the Turkey, I Ate Too Much, Daddy's Football Game, and If Turkeys Thought. My Dog May Be a Genius by Jack Perletsky, illustrated by James Stevenson. Have you ever encountered an underwater marching band? A pig in a bathing suit? A pet orangutan? Or a witch in a hardware store? You will have once you've read this collection of poems. Be glad your nose is on your face and other poems, some of the best of Jack Perletsky written by Jack Prelutsky and illustrated by Brandon Dorman. This is a treasury of more than 100 of Jack Prelutsky's poems along with 15 new poems. The New Kid on the Block by Jack Prelutsky illustrated by James Stevenson. This book contains humorous poems about such strange creatures as Baloney Belly Billy and Gloopy Gloopers. It is also available as an e-audio book. So I mentioned before that I watched an interview of Jack Perletsky, and this is where I found it. It was on, at readingrockets.org, and that web address will help you to find the interview. I hope you enjoyed learning about Roald Dahl and Jack Perletsky. There are many, many more items available in our catalog for both of these authors. Remember, you can put items on hold through the catalog at mcl.org. We will let you know when they're available and you can pick up inside on open days or curbside on curbside days. Thanks for watching today. Bye.